Hi everyone, thank you for tuning in. My name is Cassie Riva, I'm the Assistant Events Manager at an Unlikely Story Bookstore in Plainville, Massachusetts. Before we start, here's a few technical tips. If you lose your audio or visual during the event, just refresh your page or try switching to a different browser. We're also streaming on our Facebook page if you wanna watch it there. If you'd like to buy the author's books, click the green button below and it's gonna bring you to our website or click the link above the video if you're watching on Facebook or if you live close to Plainville, Massachusetts, you can come in the store and we have all the books there. We have three authors slash illustrators with us tonight discussing their new graphic novels, and they're gonna be showing us how to draw their characters. So you're gonna to wanna to have some paper and a writing utensil handy. I am so excited to introduce the first creator of the night, Paige Braddock. Paige is the Eisner nominated creator of Jane's World, the first gay themed comic work to be nationally syndicated online. A 20th anniversary anthology of the groundbreaking comic was a Lambda Literary Award finalist. She is also the chief creative officer at Charles M. Schultz Creative Associates and has illustrated several Peanuts children's books. She's also the creator of the Stinky Cecile series. And tonight Paige will share her peanut butter and cracker series. Paige, I'm going to turn it over to you. I'm going to find you. There you are. Hi, Paige. <laughs> hey, everybody. How are you? Um, thank you for that very nice introduction. I brought a couple of copies of the book in case uh, you aren't familiar with this series. Uh, Peanut Butter and Crackers. I'll do it so there's not a bad reflection, I hope. Um, this is a funny series that is based on a couple of things. One, my favorite snack, which is peanut butter and crackers. And two, um, the dogs and cat and the cat that live uh, with me and my wife in California. So this whole idea started for the book. We had a cat and a dog that were very happy and well-adjusted and had this perfect life. And we thought it would be a good idea to get a puppy. And so we adopted a little dachshund puppy and he sort of just, turned the house into chaos. And I was like, that would be a great idea for a story about a new family member arriving. And so that's how Peanut Butter and Crackers came to be. So in the first book, um, Peanut, that's the puppy, comes to live with Crackers and Butter. And Crackers is the dog and Butter is the cat. And they sort of got their names through funny things that happened to them in the book. So I don't want to spoil that to you for you. Um, so I will draw, uh, first I will draw um, Peanut. So he's the littlest and the newest member of the clan. And I don't know how you draw, but usually I use um, a lighter pencil. So I'm going to use red so that it shows up. And I sort of give myself guides for how I'm going to draw a character. So Peanut has a very big head and a small body. So most characters no matter how complex they are, are made up of smaller parts. So this is the snout and the head for Peanut. And then his body is kind of small. He has giant ears, which he sometimes steps on when he's running. So what I'm doing is I'm giving myself guidelines for his feet. He has a back ear. This is his hind leg. His tail wags. Does it look like a dog yet? Not really. Okay, so just to recap. Snout, head, big ear. This is his back ear. This is his neck and his body and his tail. And then what I usually do after I pencil it, then I go back over with something darker so that you really get the shape of the character. Hopefully you guys can see this. Yeah, this is showing up good. Okay. Normally I would be drawing on my drawing board, but I'm drawing up this angle so that you guys can see it. So this is basically the shape of his head. And then it comes down. This is his neck right here. It's kind of small. And his ear. This is his back ear. Front leg, tiny paw. He's a tiny dog, so he has tiny legs and tiny feet. His back leg. I make a lot of lines because like his tail is wagging. Okay, well now he doesn't have any facial features. So Peanut has a really big nose because 
he hasn't quite grown into his nose yet. So he has a really big nose. There's his eyes, eyebrows. How's that looking? All right. He's usually, you know, he's a really likable little puppy. He's always in a good mood. So he's usually smiling or he's usually trying to get crackers, his, the other dog to play ball with him or play fetch. That's actually the name of the second book. And Crackers likes to nap a lot, so he's not so crazy about playing fetch. Let's put his collar on. And I'm going to do a little shading on his back ear so that you can see. And a little shading on his back leg. That's Peanut. Make sure you can see his back. The funny thing is that... The reason Crackers got his name is because squirrels make him crackers. He goes crackers for squirrels. So that's the only thing he really gets excited about. Whereas Peanut loves to chase a squeaker ball. That's his favorite thing. Maybe we'll draw a squeaker ball for him. Just because. All right. Now let's draw um, let's draw the other dog, Crackers. So Crackers is taller and skinnier than Peanut. So I usually start with the shape of his head. Can you see this? You can kind of see that. I'll draw it a little bit darker so you can see it better. He has a very different head shape than Peanut. The skinny neck. This is his chest. Kind of ran out of room. You can kind of see his tail there. And unlike Peanut, his ears stand straight up. I found out after I started drawing dogs that when a dog's ears stand up and then just like tip over at the top, that it's called button ears. So Crackers has button ears. And he has kind of a big nose too. Collar. All right, then I'm gonna go over, that's my guidelines for how to draw crackers. I'm gonna go over this with a darker pencil so you can see. Normally, I would draw the part that I'm drawing in red in light pencil so that I could erase it once I do the ink over it. So you might want to try that if you um, want to practice. There we go. Draw his nose in. Draw his eyes in. I think, I think he's smiling. All right, so that is Crackers. And he has little white feet. I'm not going to do all this in color, but he has like uh, his body is kind of a blue color. And he has little white feet. He's pretty cute. And he is modeled after our dog, Buddy Barker. All right, that's crackers. Let's move on and draw butter. So... Butter is modeled after our cat who weighs like 20, 20 pounds and is actually um, twice as big as our smallest dog. So our cat is twice as big as our smallest dog. So when I draw Butter, he starts out as kind of a, just a big, kind of a big shape, just a big lump. Because this is kind of what our cat looks like. So kind of a big, slightly triangular lump. I do pause. 
These are his front legs. You can kind of see his back legs back here. He has a tail. Not forget his ears. And he has two gray spots around his eyes, his nose. His tongue is usually out a little bit. He has one gray spot in the back. His tail has three stripes on it. He's a funny shaped cat. So let's go back. We'll do the ears. I add just a tiny bit more shape to his neck. And usually I add a couple of little lines to show that he's fluffy. And then do his feet. There we go, he's smiling. Don't forget the tail. Oh, I almost forgot his spots. So he has that spot. He has a little color around his eyes. There you go. That's butter. So one of the funniest things that happened in book two, which I thought maybe I'll draw one more quick drawing for you guys, is that um, Crackers has little outfits he wears. He has a jacket. He has a raincoat. And in book two, something happens that requires that Butter dresses up in Crackers' raincoat and sneak into the doggy daycare place where Peanut and Crackers are. So if you can imagine, um, the cat sneaks in to Dogtown, doggy daycare, and you know, big things happen. But the funny part of that was, was Butter having to dress up in Crackers raincoat. So I did this drawing where he is in the raincoat. It has like a button that comes around here. It has a button that comes around here. It has a hood so that only one of his ears is sticking out. It's actually one of my favorite scenes in book two when the dogs realize there's a cat in Barktown. It's pretty funny. All right, we're going to. Luckily, um, Butter isn't really scared of dogs because he already lives with two dogs, so he's not very intimidated by dogs. Here's buttons, little raincoat. Again, his tail. There he is. It almost, we almost need some, I don't really have any good yellow, but this is definitely a yellow raincoat. Does that show up? That shows up a little bit.
if we were doing this in color, he actually has a little bit of a pink nose. So that's the three characters in um, Peanut Butter and Crackers. So thank you for letting me share these drawings with you. And I hope you have fun drawing the characters at home. Thank you, Paige. That was so fun. Oh my God, I love the cat so much. Big, we're giving big <laughs> people over here. My cat's sitting behind me right now. <laughs> that was cute. You can order Paige's books by clicking that green button below or the link above the video on Facebook. Paige will bring you back out a little later. Thank you. All right. Our next author is, oh, joining us from Portugal is Brett Bean. Brett has created art for TV, films, games, and books for clients such as Nickelodeon, Disney TV, Leapfrog, and Nerds Corps. He'll be sharing his Zoo Patrol Squad series tonight. Brett, thank you so much for joining us. I'm gonna pull you up. There you are, hello. Hello, everybody. Oh, and there you go. All right. So my name is Brett Bean, and I'm calling you from Portugal. It is 11 o'clock at night over here. And um, this is the series. This is the Zoo Patrol Squad series. And it might be flipped around for you because it is for me. Um, thank you very much. I do like my Santa hat. We got this one when it was going out. Yeah. Um, so this is about um, uh, a fennec fox and a pot-bellied pig. So this is Penny and Fenlock. And when the zoo closes at night, they go on and solve crimes and mysteries for the zoo, for the zoo animals around them. And they get into crazier and crazier. As, as the series goes on, they get into wackier and crazier things. Um, as I write, I, I get to start writing what I really like to. So it's a really fun. It, uh, I'm, I'm the author and artist, so it's a really interesting challenge to do both sides. So um, I thought uh, today I was going to do a little image and kind of show you how I sort of build um, I am somebody who uh, works in animation. Uh, I'm in Villamora right now. So hopefully you can see that screen. So usually when I start out, um, whether I'm working digitally or traditionally is, is I'll start to um, kind of build my overall li lines of my characters of how they're going to be. 99% of the time I have my characters moving in in some form or fashion. I don't I, I rarely draw them in static form from my anim, from the animation background. Um, I don't know it's just something in me. So even if you notice a lot of stuff of what I do is they're just really round shapes and I'm just trying to pick these bold kind of things happening, right? So I kind of just take my overall shape and go, oh, okay, that's gonna be that's gonna be my penny, right? I try to stay really loose with this. I usually use a, a blue pencil if I'm drawing, or even a crayon. Sometimes when I draw with my kids, I'll just take their crayon and use that as the base. So it doesn't matter whatever tool you really feel good with. And because it's Christmas time and somebody said something about my hat, I want to make sure that I get my Christmas hat in. So Penny always has five fluffs. One, two, three, four, five. She wears a scarf 24-7. It's just part of her deal. She's got a backpack where they keep all of her clues for the two of them. And then Fenlock, he kind of starts out as like an oval. And I kind of do a little triangle. And again, when I draw, I actually, I draw pretty fast. <laughs> but it's, um, I do that so I don't second guess myself. Because as artists, I think we can always second guess ourselves and go, oh, I could make a better decision. I could do this or I could do that. And so I make myself just sort of go with whatever happens. Instead of noodling away at something. 
again, the animation background, just being real loose and sort of just put in lines. So I usually have them in tandem together. Whenever I do images, I try to have both of my cast. They are best friends. And so I always try to make sure that the best friends are together in most of the scenes. It's really a story about friendship. And humor and mostly humor and I get to draw cool monsters and crazy things that happen in the... <laughs> so usually what I do when I... I also ink traditionally. The, the whole first book was done um, uh, traditional. And so I would do these blue pencils and then I would um, just ink right on top of them. So that's actually what I would do digitally as well. So I leave everything up pretty... Uh, pretty much loose like this, right? That's as, that's as strong as I get. And then when I come in here, this is when I get to zoom in because I'm getting old. I need to zoom in real close now. But I ink almost the same way. I have tried to slow down. And when I do, it no longer looks like me. And I've tried and I've tried. I promise I've tried. So Penny's got, I love drawing um, big noses. And so I made sure that she had one because they're one of my favorite things to draw. I think ever since I was a kid, I think, just enjoyed drawing big noses. I don't know why. We each have a thing, I think. And one, two, three, four, five. So I've got, Penny's got this oversized shirt on, and then she has my son used to love wearing a long sleeved shirt underneath his t shirt. So that's why she has this outfit. As she has this long, long sleeve underneath this one. I created this entire series during the pan during all of this time of, of, of what we're in now, right? I don't even like saying it, but um, during all the things we've done over the last two years, um, I've done a, all, all the books during that time, all four, you know, all four books in the series. So I used my family as a lot of inspiration. One, because we were all holed up together for a very long time. <laughs> And the book three, which just came out, um, actually, uh, the reason it came out is uh, my family started to feed uh, some feral cats in our backyard. And I told them, "Is like, once you do that, you guys are, you're, in, you're going to introduce this whole problem for us. And lo and behold, that's exactly what happened. Um, the cat named Luna started coming by and then Luna started telling her friends and more friends and more friends. And all of a sudden we had... I think at the height, we had like six stray cats coming into our, our backyard and they were, my two-year-old was, um, I ended up finding him digging up um, cat stuff in his uh, sandbox. <laughs> and when I was writing this book, uh, book three, that's when the inspiration hit of like, well, how do you get, how do you get feral cats to leave you alone? <laughs> and so I started just thinking that an old Western town was being under, was being um, taken over by a bunch of cats called the Glaring Gang, because a group of cats is called a Glaring. And so you never know as an artist the inspiration 
you're going to use, right? One day it could be that aha moment, or it could be over time that you just sort of keep going back and thinking and scratching that itch and going, oh, I think it could be like this. I can, it could be like that. So always kind of being ready for when that shows up. And I gave him big gloves because, you know, I think at Christmas time and he uses all four paws, he's going to have big gloves on, big mitts. And this is about when I start to see that I'm starting to warm up. It takes a while for my hand to warm up, but then I start making decisions that I don't I don't think about anymore. And that's when I think that I've kind of crossed into that, I call it the art zone where you're no longer really thinking about your decisions and you're just sort of going and playing, you know, it's kind of like, um, I imagine uh, jazz musicians when they get to that one spot where they're just sort of playing and they're jamming together and one thing leads to the next, which leads to the next and you start making all those decisions. And that's where I think, um, at least my artwork feels the most like mine, which is all we're trying to do. So then I make sure to pull back, see the full image, I'm gonna make some snow now. Festive time. And if I do, if I do our best, Bob Ross, I gotta make sure I gotta put some happy trees. I'm gonna put some happy trees back here. And all my happy trees are are just lines. But that's what everything is, right? They're all just lines. It's how you put them together where people interpret it something. Of course, now they just look like really tiny trees. And then I'll come in here and usually I would use white out if I was using um, natural media. I just sort of add Just some touches. Sorry, this is probably really noodling something, but this is my my brain just sort of jumps around and does this and doesn't know how to do it any other way. <laughs> so you're getting a glimpse into how I do it. And, and of course, because animation I need a little bit of glint in that eye make them feel like they're coming alive a little bit more and uh, that's my little holiday picture of uh, Penny and Fenlock so yeah that was awesome <laughs> my camera's gonna let me come back on screen <laughs> That was so fun to watch. If you're drawing along at home, um, tweet us and tag us. Tag an unlikely story and tag Brett so we can see your drawings. That'd be so fun. Yeah, that I'd was love awesome. to see it. Thank you so much, Brett. You can cool. order his books by clicking the green button. It's the holidays. You won't get your book by Christmas if you're going to ship it. But, you know, you can print out a picture of it, put it in a card. It's on the way. Thank you, Brett. We'll bring you on a little bit. Sounds good. All right. And our last author of the night, we have Michael Regina joining us. Michael studied painting and drawing at the University of North Florida and minored in literature. Michael is the creator of the Webtoons feature comics, Adamsville. 
When he's not making comics, he loves fishing, rooting for the Jacksonville Jaguars, and spending time with his family. Tonight, he's going to share his graphic novel, The Sleepover, which is perfect for fans of Stranger Things. Michael, where are you? There you are. Hey. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for having me tonight. Excited to talk to you about The Sleepover and do some drawing with you. Um, as we said, uh, my newest book is called The Sleepover, and I'm not sure if it's reversed for you as well. It looks reversed on my end. But uh, The Sleepover is um, a scary book about a group of friends who are trying to cheer up their friend Matthew after, they recent, after he recently lost a, a caretaker. And uh, so they have a sleepover party, and they try to have fun together and have a good evening to, um, you know, just try to bring his spirits up. And along the way, they discover that the new babysitter taking care of the family uh, is potentially a real monster. So uh, it's it's really kind of my tribute to my own childhood. It takes place in 1993, and the characters and the story is very much based on my own fan, my own friends, my own family, and myself. In a lot of ways, um, this is kind of loosely based on a real thing that happened to me when I was a kid and, and the passing of a nanny that was taking care of my family and sort of what that was like to go through that experience and uh, what I learned. So um, it was a lot of fun to work on and uh, it's a very personal, uh, meaningful book to me and I hope anyone who reads it has a great time with it. So what I figured I would do though is uh, do a couple of drawings here and uh, show you how I do that. Let me... Uh, screen share here get, make sure i get the right screen give me one second all right here we go so i use uh, a program uh, called clip studio paint on on a uh, macintosh and i also have a cintiq monitor that i draw on most of the time i actually uh, draw using an ipad pro uh, which I love. Uh, now you can do that in just a regular iPad with the iPad pencil. Uh, so uh, the Apple pencil, I'm sorry. So uh, I figure I'll show you a little bit around the program. I'll even show you sort of what the step-by-step -step looks like on a page that I'm working on. So first things first, though, I figured it's always fun to draw monsters. So let's look at our big mean monster from the story, Miss Swan. Um, and uh, Swan in the book is based, uh, she's kind of called the, the bird witch of the woods. She's this uh, legend from the area about this, this witch that lives in the woods. And, and anyone who goes into her woods uh, becomes marked by her. And that means that she is going to haunt them and try to eat them. And so uh, I designed this sort of like, what if this like giant bird monster lived and had like all these ravens that were sort of like her little minions and stuff, what would she look like? And so what I do is I start off drawing her just like I would a person. So I start off with a circle and uh, kind of the guidelines for the eyes. Now, uh, and then Swan just has these kind of big circular eyes. And I can sometimes make them look angry or mean. But when I want her to just sort of look kind of creepy, I just keep them big. And then I design it so that there's just these big feathers that come off the top of her head like a crest. And then I keep uh, reiterating those in between them. And there's sort of three layers to this. And then in the middle layer, everything gets um, black. And I just kind of have this black interior. And I'll like use X's to kind of show off what that looks like. And so this is how a sketch might start. I use this uh, toggle switch to turn my drawing black or white, or I'm sorry, to make it blue. Uh, and Clip Studio Paint, this is a little icon over here on the right-hand side. And then once I have a sketch that I'm happy with, it's doing an auto save. give me one sec. Once I have that, I will create a new layer, and I'll start working on top of that. And this is where I also get in real close. I just feel like I have a lot more control over my lines when I get close. Now, one of the cool things I did with the sleepovers, I actually designed... Like literally every tool that I used in this book uh, is, a, is a custom brush or a custom tool uh, to try to make the book feel uh, the way I wanted it to look. I could never find uh, a, like a brush, a digital brush that I really liked. And so eventually I was just like, you know what, I'm going to go build one. So this was a pencil inking brush that I designed. 
so that it looks like a pencil, but it's also dark enough that it can be used as inks. And let's see, we're going to try to do it real quick here. And I might have to um, make my pencil a little bit bigger to show off one part. It will be here all day, and I'll show you kind of what I'm talking about in a minute. Because uh, Swan, I really designed this very intricate looking <clears throat> monster design where the way her feathers work is, well, actually, let's do this real quick. Let's go ahead and see if I can get this to be darkened in. So one of the cool things about working digitally is you can just paint bucket in a dark area and see if it'll work. Yep, there you go. If you get this nice dark area, sometimes it, uh, the one downside of using that sort of brush is that it gives me this like little bit of a halo effect on the edge. I have to clean that up too. But uh, what I also then do is I just sort of start this design. I pull down from the top and I make it dark at the top of the feathers and then light at the bottom. Dark. I'm going to make my brush a little bit bigger. Actually, that's, <laughs> I was wondering why the brush was so small. It was actually set smaller than I usually use. So that's why. And it just sort of gives this really cool like effect where you can see the next set of feathers, but it keeps it looking really dark and kind of creepy. Zoom out so I can see that. And I just do this all the way around her head until I get done. I'm going to try to speed up a little bit because I'd like to do one more drawing of Matthew for you. So actually, what will be kind of fun here, I don't know if I'll be able to finish this particular drawing or I can try to in a minute. But so I keep talking about how difficult these feathers were. And the funny thing was, is man, when I was working on pages where she was involved, it was so difficult because I would just sit here for this long period of time, just doing this design, building these feathers out. And I was like, man, I'm never gonna finish this book if I keep this design, but I didn't wanna change the design because it was such a cool design. I was so happy with it. And so one of my friends said, well, why don't you design a feather brush that you can use so that you can just, um, you can build in her feathers. And so I actually did. So let's see, I'm gonna create some wings that stretch off here. And I created this brush that when I run it across, it creates that feathering effect. So if I run the brush right there alongside the, or run the edge of the other feathers, it does that design for me. And the cool thing is, again, this is a brush I made myself. So it's, uh, it's you know, definitely, it's actually my own drawing, my own drawing materials that I'm using, and I'm just using it to kind of make the process a little bit more efficient. That's one of the cool things that you can get with working with digital is you can really come up with these tools that make the process a little bit easier. But I always still go back into the design and I clean it up, make sure it looks right. And sometimes I might add a little bit more it's really just a tool to kind of help me move a little bit faster, but still looks hand drawn. So that's just a, uh, a quick little doodle of Miss Swan. And you'd obviously have, um, sorry, I have a button on my pencil that like uh, will jump over to my other screen and I sometimes tap it and while I'm drawing and it draws a line over to the other screen. All right, so that's a quick drawing of Miss Swan. I also like to come in here and kind of give her these rings around her eyes so they look like they're this halo design. And uh, what I'll do as well is I'll do a quick drawing of Matthew. Back to the right brush. And Matthew is actually a character that is based on myself. Uh, and who I, uh, based on my myself when I was uh, at that age, around 12 years old. And so I um, based a lot of his personality on, on myself and his interests and that sort of thing. Again, I just start off with this quick guidelines, hair parted down the middle. And... 
just as t-shirt lines. So now we'll go back in over that and try to make a clean drawing. go Matthew's uh, it's it was so much fun drawing this this character like I said I did base him on myself and his friends are based on my own friends from that time it was a really fun trip down memory lane and kind of odd actually when I'm talking to my family because it's become this discussion of like oh uh, talking to my sister and stuff, I'm like, oh, that's like when you go do such and such and whatever. And, and I'm like, well, it's not really you. It's a fictionalized version of you, but um, based a lot of those designs on them. So there's a quick drawing of Matthew. <clears throat> and then uh, I I'll often, I'll go in there and I'll start doing some touch-up drawing, uh, touch-up things here that add detail. Kind of just as well look i start feeling out for like hey where where do i feel like the drawing needs something a little bit of detail or design work to help it feel um just more finished more polished and then the the last thing i figured i'd show you so those are the two drawings there is matthew and and miss swan in her bird monster form and then i figured what else would be kind of cool to see is a look at like what a page actually looks like so like one of the fun things about working digitally is that all of sort of the steps of my process still exist in this format so you can actually see like what did the sketch look like what did the inks look like and then what did the colors look like so this is the sketch for a page in the book where matthew and judy have gone into this uh the woods they've entered into swan's lair and they don't really believe that this whole thing is real so they're just like hey let's go into the woods and then they discover these ravens are everywhere and they're calling out their name and that sort of thing so this is the sketch drawing that i did you can see it's just real loose it's this real quick drawing and then i then take that and i do a finished piece of line art and that's on a separate set of layers and so you can get in close and take a look at it and this is what the line art looks like. And you see, like, it looks sort of sketchy, like a pencil, but it's also got uh, a nice finish to it that makes it look ink-like. Then lastly, uh, the colors. And again, one of the cool things I came up with in working on this book is I really wanted the book to have this very watercolor-like effect to it with the colors. And so I designed some brushes, that I used some brushes that another person had created I also went in and designed some of my own brushes to give it this real watercolory effect. <clears throat> I'm really happy with how that all turned out. And then lastly, we go in and we add the text. And those are in their own set of layers too. And you can see uh, Matthew and Judy as they run away from the swarm of, of ravens that are attacking them or intimidating them in this, this forest. So that's um, what the art process looks like with the sleepover. Um, uh, again, like I said, one of the really cool things with working digitally, if you decide to try it, is you can create your own tools um, and you can really build some steps into your process that helps your art look like yourself, but um, maybe helps you save a little bit of time if you're doing something that's a little bit more complicated. And I'll go ahead and uh, close my video here. I think you're muted. Yep, looks like we still got you muted. I'm just talking away. <laughs> <laughs> All right, if you have any questions, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no one wants to hear. It happens to all of us. Yeah. <laughs> um, if you have any questions for these awesome people right here, you can write them right here in the chat and I'll read them out. I'll give you a second. Thank you for uh, the person who, I think it was Heather, who put her photo on Twitter. Oh, cool. Through the cat page. <laughs> nice. All right. I, I it's always question. fun to watch other artists work because I like learn some tips. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs>
So fun. The Clip sure. Studio, hmm, you say? Yeah. Clip, <laughs> Speed up my studio. time, hmm? Oh, you made man. your own brushes, I see. <laughs> Very clever, yes. Clip Studio is amazing if you draw comics. I highly recommend it. It's a program <laughs> designed for, it made for comic book artists. And so it's got so many tools in it. It's well worth picking up. Excellent. All right, we have time for, I think, two questions. What inspired you guys to draw? to start drawing. Um, we'll start with Paige. Um, I wanted to be a cartoonist when I was a little kid. Like, I think I was seven or eight when I declared to my parents I wanted to be a cartoonist. My inspiration was uh, the Sunday comic strips um, because when I was a kid, that was what I had the most exposure to. But like Popeye and Peanuts and Beetle Bailey and kind of the old school stuff, that was my inspiration. Brett? Um, I would say, you know, the comic strips were, was a big thing. I think Calvin and Hobbes, Bill Watterson's work, um, yeah. really sort of made me think that I wanted to be an artist. And then once I started to discover like Jim Henson, you know, had, was an auteur with all of the Muppets, the fact that you could be creative as a job, it just sort of like clicked and went, oh, I, I need to do something with what I want to do with my life instead of just go and figure it out. So it, it was very pointed towards for towards those two. Excellent. Michael? Yeah, for me, it was um, discovering uh, Jim Lee's X-Men when I was like in third grade. There's something about that art just was like, I know what I want to do the rest of my life, <laughs> like immediately. Um, but then as I grew older, it my interest in superheroes sort of waned over time and I wasn't as interested and creating superhero comics and then uh but i did become very interested in the idea of telling stories like a movie or, or would be so uh i was a huge fan of like m night Shyamalan and stuff and i still am dur during sort of my college years and that was sort of like the first moment when i realized like oh one person can be the writer and the creator of a whole thing and it just sort of hit my life at this really interesting place and so i started thinking what if i made those kinds of stories that i'm really responding to as comics so it's really kind of an amalgam of, of comics and movies and, and that sort of thing. But it's always been, um, yeah, it's just always been back there. I don't think I realized I wanted to write, though, until I was in college. It was always, I wanted to draw. It was really a discovery that, oh, I can write and create the stories that I really would love to see. That college kind of was like, you know, that light bulb went off. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Perfect. All right. All right, with the holidays being this week, do you guys have any fun traditions? We'll start with a uh, page. Any fun? Anything fun? Uh, I eat way, I eat way too many sugar cookies. That's like my thing. I like the sugar cookies where they like cut them in shapes and put frosting on them. And then, yeah, <laughs> sit and watch Christmas movies and eat cookies. <laughs> that my, sounds like a thing. great day to me. <laughs> Brett? Uh, well, this is weird because it's the first year in Portugal. So everything is a hundred percent different. So traditions are kind of like out the, out the door, but Whenever I drive with the kids, um, my parents used to used to belt out chest nuts roasting on an open, and I would sing that <laughs> until they both yelled at me to stop because that was the only tradition was me yelling at them to stop. So I figured I had to do that to my children until they yelled at me to stop, and it's very cool. fast. It's, it, I don't even make it past chestnut <laughs> before they're screaming at me. So <laughs> tradition kept alive. <laughs> Nice. Excellent. Oh, my camera battery just died. That's okay. You can still hear me, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. All right. I might be flickering on and off. That's okay. I'm just going to hide myself. All right. And um, Michael, any traditions? Yeah, um, we've got a couple. We like to uh, decorate our own ornaments and um, yeah, we're, we're Christians. And so one of the things over the last few years we've really gotten into is we read through the book of Luke. Uh, starting on day one, it's, it's it, the book is 25 chapters long, so it ends right on Christmas. So you get the whole life of Christ. So that's kind of one that we've carried for a few years now. And then just, you know, lots of Christmas movies. I like a lot of the cheesy ones. But Santa Claus 2 is probably my favorite. <laughs> it's the it's so cheesy, but I just love it to death. Um, so, yeah, you know, it, there's a lot. I feel like there's a lot of little traditions we keep. We just like keep adding little ones onto it every year. Where it's lights and movies and, da -da -da and so on and so forth. That's awesome. I, uh, you get Linus's famous speech in Luke, you know, yeah. Christmas. Yeah, from the class of Christmas special. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
it's not a uh, it's not a Christmas if you don't watch Charlie Brown. Hey. Just once. Right. <laughs> I was in charge of making cookies this year, and I was making these peanut butter, the ones with like the Hershey kiss at the top. Mm-hmm. Failed yeah. miserably. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! Um, my boyfriend compared them to wet sand. Shows like that. <laughs> not a ringing endorsement. <laughs> yeah. <It's> like, good. <laughs> all right. Thank you all so, so much. Click the green button below or the link on top if you're watching on Facebook. Um, support these authors, support our independent bookstore. Thank you guys so much. This is so fun to watch and share your photos on Instagram, Twitter, tag us, tag all of us. We want to see them. Thank you, everyone. Happy holidays. Thank you for hosting. Happy holidays. Nice to meet everybody. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Me too.